Wouldn't you want to know what an insight moment is regarding your children, no matter what age they are? Kind of like an aha moment. We're going to talk about that with Nina Seidel and her new book, Parenting for Life. Stay tuned. Hi, George Bruno here, also known as the Sultan of Silver in the hair industry, the guy that makes people look good on the outside, talking with Nina Seidel tonight, the person who makes people look good on the inside. Feel good. Feel good. Look good and feel good. <laughs> Dr. Feel Good. <laughs> Let's talk about the topic, perceptions. Mm. Perceptions of our children. Elaborate on that. Well, thank you. I love this topic. So, despite the fact that we may not always understand, accept, or agree with what our children feel and perceive, they have every right to that individuation, the ability to honor themselves. And after all, when we're raising children, don't we want that for them? Don't we want them to go out into the world, into their relationships and work lives, and be able to say, I don't like how this feels, I feel uncomfortable, or I love this and this makes me feel like I'm shining and glowing and I'm alive. So if we're threatened by our children's perceptions and feelings, we're really putting a damper on who they are and who they're becoming, or they can't really express their full selves around us, which is the antithesis of what a good parent wants, I think. You said a word that not a lot of people use every day, and I like the word individuation. Explain that to our That's, audience. Sure, you got it. So individuation is the process that occurs during adoles late, late adolescence, early uh, teen and on, and even prior to like tweens. And what that is is the times in life when children are actively pursuing outside interests, their understanding how they think and feel in a greater way than they may have before. They're not as dependent on the parent or the parents. They're finding their own. They're standing in their own power. Even when they mess up, they have that opportunity to learn from their mistakes like we do in order for them to then feel like a strong individual. That's essentially what it means. I like that. I like that. I heard it so now, I want you to comment on this because you're the psychological professional. Mm -hmm. Someone described someone else's child once as they couldn't tell where the parent ended and the child began. There, it was, oh. there needs to be a separation between the two. Absolutely. I mean, what you're talking about is called enmeshment. And enmeshment is, is a danger sign if you are experiencing that. Uh, if you're looking to be friends with your child, if you're looking for your child to meet your needs uh, instead of adults, uh, healthy relationships to meet your needs, um, not being able to differentiate between parent and child really squashes, as I kind of intimated a, a little while ago, the child's healthy ego functioning where they need to know where they end and where someone else begins. And actually that taps into mental health issues. People that have very severe mental health issues and mental illness, some have no idea where they end and where others begin because they weren't taught that or there's a heredity tendency for that. So it's important to really honor the difference, the differentiation between, just like in a healthy marriage or relationship, you're not really one. You're acting as a team, but you're not one. You're two separate people, hopefully. You could have five children, and there's mm -hmm. five separate personalities there. Mm -hmm. Everyone is different. I know I rescue animals, and sometimes I rescue sibling animals, like a litter of puppies or a litter of cats. They all came from the same mom, but each one is very distinct. Well, it isn't only the personality. Thank you for mentioning that. It's more than that. It's the identification with their unique self. It's the um, understanding that they have unique needs, feelings, perceptions, um, interests, and aptitudes. There can be children in the same family. I've worked with people. They have one gifted child and one special needs child. They need completely different things despite 
also requiring the same amount of unconditional love and respect and time and affection and more, obviously. I notice that parents sometimes, because I think we're all winging it, there's not um, a universal manual for yes, raising children. Oh, yes, there is. Well, prior to this, Parenting <laughs> for Life by Nina Seidel, there wasn't a universal manual. Thank God. I mean, this didn't exist when I was in my mama's womb, all right? And how many generations have gone by that didn't have guidance like this? This is amazing. And I think this will make parenting a lot easier for many people at whatever stage of parenting you're at. But I was always labeled as the quiet one. My brother was the athletic one. Yeah. My other brother was the rebellious one. And these labels stick with us as we get older. When I visit my relatives in New York that I haven't seen for a, mi a million years, I am still little Georgie. Hmm. Like, really? Georgie? Like, I haven't been called that in 50 years. <laughs> You're not that old. The well, labels. I, I know. I th you know, labels are dangerous. Um, and look, let's face it, we label ourselves. So if we're in that habit pattern of negating or judging or labeling anyone, most likely, again, that mirror is shined toward us. It's reflected when we hear ourselves labeling our children, even in thoughts, even if you're thinking, oh, that's that one, or that's that behavior, I'm going to name it. What I always advocate is that you name a behavior, not the person. Same thing when you're when you're giving consequences to a child who's you know experimenting or acting out or made a mistake. You label or you don't label, you name the behavior, not the child. There's a key word in the subtitle of this book, consciously creating your lifetime relationship with your child. Consciously being conscious, being aware. Mm -hmm. So this is almost like a, a guide in conscious parenting. It is. And Deepak Chopra said, if you are interested in conscious parenting, this book is an excellent guide. You mean I'm thinking like Deepak Chopra? I guess you are. High five. <laughs> yeah. All right. He's such a cool guy, too. Deepak is like my him. homeboy. <laughs> so, I mean, look, children, when we're, when we're raising and relating to our children, they often shine a light um, to for us that we can look inwardly, even if whether we want it or not. And those are golden moments. I call them in my book insight moments. And then there's something that I term lifetime insights. It's like a teaching opportunity, a teaching moment. It's the same concept. I like the word insight because it does open your mind to be more self-aware and to become more conscious. And even when I do cognitive behavioral therapy, a part of that is the thoughts you think, the beliefs that you hold, the words you speak, and then the actions that follow and the feelings that follow. Would it help parents if they had a little journal and wrote down those insight moments? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're here for a reason. I believe we're all here, in my humble opinion, to love and to learn. So... In some ways, we know more than our children. We have the life experience, the wisdom. We've made some mistakes we don't want our children to make, for example. Yet, honestly, we also can be students to our children. Why did I react so strongly? What else can I do to teach with love and respect mm -hmm. when my child makes a, a mistake or messes up? How can I let each individual child know how precious they are to me? Not because they have a certain characteristic in, in how they look or how they sound, how they act, but who they are intrinsically as human beings. I like that. We're going to dis discover more of that in future book chats with Nina Seidel, author of Parenting for Life. So for now, it's George and Nina Seidel. Peace. Peace out.